This video is brought to you by our trusted graphics partner, NVIDIA. Welcome to another Linus Tech Tips video where we have a pretty exciting comparison for you guys. We're going to be doing the FX 8350 overclocked versus the Core i5 3570K also overclocked. Now, our methodology for this is actually, let's do test bench first. So test bench wise, we've got equivalent boards. So a Crosshair 5 formula and then a Maximus 5 formula. These are both ROG top tier, well, almost, not quite, but almost top tier gaming boards from ASUS. We've got Mushkin Copperhead 1600 RAM. Now these look kind of special, but they're not really anything special in terms of the spec. They're just regular CL9 1600 megahertz memory. For our GPU, we've decided to go with the GTX 660 Ti because it's, one of those, well, it's very, very, very popular. It's one of those ones where if you're buying a gaming system of this tier, this is pretty much the graphics card that we'd recommend that you put in it. We're using a Vertex 4 for our operating system, and we're running all of our games off of an iSCSI drive over the network. We are cooled by an H100, which is what allows us to hit these overclocked frequencies. And other than that, I think we're good to go. So the CPU should be pretty self-explanatory. Our 8350, we scoured the internets for both the 8350 and the 3570K to find out what the overclock that 95% of people were going to be able to obtain. So we didn't go for as the best that we could do on these chips. It was based on what we know you guys are going to be able to do. So they might look a little conservative. So our 8350 is clocked at 4.6 gigahertz and our 3570K is clocked at 4.2 gigahertz because we consider those pretty much guaranteed numbers. So this video is going to focus on Windows 7. We are going to do a number of different videos about this and different scenarios. So this is Windows 7 without maxing out the game sort of like crazy. This is sort of how we would probably actually run them. So many of the games are run without anti-aliasing because I personally don't like it. I do find there's more input lag when I run anti-aliasing. So take that for what it is. Um, but why are we running these tests? These two CPUs are sort of widely regarded as, well, the 3570 is the only choice for gamers, uh, sort of out there on the forums. And Logan from Tech Syndicate actually released a video showing that the 8350 was competitive or even beat the 3570 in many games. Not only that, but Crisis 3 recently came out with several publications saying that the 8350 performed better than a 3570K in that particular game. So we were like, okay, well, we have the hardware, we have the time, sort of. Um, <laughs> Slick has the time. And uh, so let's run these tests. Let's find out what's going on here. So let's start with StarCraft 2. StarCraft 2, we have a pretty CPU intensive benchmark. Our benchmarking guide for StarCraft 2 is available. If you click the uh, video annotation here, go check it out. You can run our benchmark for yourself. Pretty CPU intensive and the 3570K kind of runs away with this one. Now you can see the average frame rates on the graph right here. Minimum frame rates were pretty much the same story with the 3570K coming in at 57 minimum and the 8350 coming in at 42 minimum. However, it should be noted that these, this game is playable regardless of whether you're running at 40 or 57 FPS, but it is a big performance difference, about 30%. All right. Next up, we've got Far Cry 3. So this is a new game running on CryEngine 3, and we saw very, very similar performance between the 3570K and the 8350 at our overclocks. Pretty much the same, and this was true of the minimum frame rates as well. So it was 43 for the 8350 and 44 FPS minimum for the 3570K. So the, I don't know. I mean, there's like those reports about CryEngine 3 favoring AMD architectures and multi-threading and all that good stuff may be true because our 3770 performed a lot better than the 3570K in uh, Far Cry 3. So more threads, more better. Crisis 3. Similar story again with the averages. Now this, this was kind of a funny one. The averages were almost the same, which is what you guys see, but the minimum for the 8350 dipped down to 20, well, for the 3570 dipped down to 29. Now this was rerun a couple of times, so we did validate it, but it's just one of those things where it might have been a bit of an anomaly, just kind of some weird thing, but there you go. So averages looked very similar. Moving along to Battlefield 3, we've got pretty much a neck and neck dead heat, but the 8350 edges out the 3570K in averages, but not in terms of the minimum. So the minimums were a little bit lower for the 8350. 
in Skyrim. It should be noted that our Skyrim run has 18 mods from the Steam Workshop. So guys, if you sort of can't get the same results as us in Skyrim, that's probably why. But the 3570K did put up a pretty good show against the 8350 in this one, beating it handily. And the minimum frame rates were about 50 FPS on the 3570 versus 40 on the 8350. For Dirt 3, uh, well, this game ran really well on both CPUs to the point where it almost doesn't really matter anymore, but the 3570K does edge out the 8350 again. Witcher 2, gorgeous game, demanding game. DirectX 9 game, and I'm surprised every time I see this, but in this one it was a clear win for the 3570. 76.8 versus 71.1, however, the minimums were more telling for this one with the 3570K getting about 60 FPS minimum and the 8350 getting about 50 FPS minimum. Metro 2033 was another 3570K win, but it looks a little bigger than it actually was because the minimum frames were actually very, very similar in this game, and that represents more of a playability difference than average frames per second for most gamers. Crisis 2 is our last one to wrap things up, and this is another clear win for the 3570K with 76 versus 68 FPS and a minimum that's about 10 frames per second higher. So conclusion-wise in all of this, Newer game engines, such as CryEngine 3, which is what Far Cry 3 and Crisis 3 are running, seem to be starting to favor multi-threading more. So the 8350 is an 8-core processor, depending on how you look at it exactly, whereas the 3570 is a purely 4-core processor. So as we move forward, will the 8350 continue to become a more valid gaming CPU? I think the answer is yes. It has higher power consumption, and it does run hotter than the 3570K. But right now in current games that don't leverage all those CPU cores, it performs well enough. I mean, there's no game where the 8350 was the difference between playable and not playable. We didn't encounter that, except in Crisis 3, where we had that one dip, but that looked like a bit of an anomaly, even like, I don't know what to say about that. Um, but moving forward, the 8350 might begin to be able to flex its muscle a little bit more, especially with all of the news about PlayStation 4 having an x86 multi-core processor in it. Who knows, even though every PC game tends to be a console port these days. Looking at you, game developers. It may actually be beneficial for processors like the 8350 to have that console presence. So there you go, folks. We're going to follow up this video with an anti-aliasing one, as well as a platform comparison on Windows 8 to see how on the very latest Windows platform these two CPUs compare against each other. Thanks for checking out this video on Linus Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.